Hi, Just a Viking here. The purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to apply indigo materials to the indigo scenes you create in iClone. This is actually part one of a two-part discussion. This tutorial is going to cover three main topics. The differences between iClone materials and indigo materials, how to find and get indigo materials, and how to apply those materials to your scene from within indigo. This all started when a friend on the iClone forum was trying to get a realistic rendering of a diamond, but wasn't happy with the results. I'd already spent some time with Indigo, so I decided to try my hand at it. I learned a lot of random things about Indigo while working on this project, and I really want to share them with you, but they'll have to wait for future tutorials. At the conclusion of this video, I'll have a tutorial teaser to tell you more about them. So without further ado, Let's get started. I started with the iClone 6 default project and added the diamond prop you saw moments ago. If we select the diamond, we can see some useful properties, such as opacity, reflection, and refraction. An important thing to know about these properties is they are all based on appearance, but are not necessarily physically accurate in their behavior. For example, Refraction is a simple 0 to 100 slider. We do not have meaningful values for different materials like water, glass, or olive oil. They are all meant to look good while still allowing for real-time animation and rendering. The refraction is really cool. I think I could play with that all day long. But let's get back to the tutorial. To complete my scene, I changed the image size and added some extra lights to the scene. One point light and two spotlights. When I was satisfied with my setup, I went to the top menu bar and clicked the Render Scene in Indigo button using all out-of-the-box defaults. You'll notice that Indigo gets right to work, rendering the scene immediately. The iClone interface to Indigo works quite nicely, especially considering the differences between the two applications. The result was okay, but not quite what I was hoping for. Even after several minutes of rendering, it still was sort of flat. It looks more like a piece of plastic than diamond. And while the diamond is transparent, it's lacking the refractive properties of a real gem. Well, since Indigo is a physics-based renderer, I thought it'd be better to have a real diamond material instead of some approximate simulation. So I went to indigorenderer.com to see what I could find. Once there, simply click on the Materials tab. On the Materials page, you can browse through a wide range of materials that have been generously uploaded by their user community. In the Gemstone section, we can find a diamond material, and it's at the top of the list. How convenient! Notice the person who made this material says these are physically accurate properties. Well, what sort of material properties are we talking about in Indigo? These properties are, for lack of a better term, very scientific. Just look at some of these values. The index of refraction, or how light bends as it passes through the material. The Cauchy B coefficient, which is similar to the index of refraction, but it creates the prism effect and separates out the colors of the rainbow. There are also values indicating how wavelengths of light get absorbed by the material as it passes through. Notice it's not color, it's wavelengths. And I don't know about you, but I don't store the wavelength for orange in my head. Well, thankfully, someone else did all the hard work, so we can simply download the material into a convenient location. Back in Indigo, you simply import the material you downloaded. Notice it's conveniently selected for you in the object browser on the left side of the application, so it's ready to be used. Now just assign the diamond material to the diamond object using the Assign Material tool. Notice the object is highlighted in the small preview window so you know you hit your target. Let's render this again and see what changed. Notice the render will start over from the beginning, which makes sense. Well, it doesn't take long to notice some obvious differences. 
Very quickly you begin to notice light spots all over the place as the light refracts correctly while passing through the gem. It's starting to sparkle and shine. Let's see what this looked like when it was done rendering. Look at the nice prism rainbows. That's because it diffracts light in a way that's physically accurate, bending different wavelengths differently to make little rainbows. Let's do a comparison again. The original scene in iClone, our first render in Indigo using the material from iClone, and the exact same scene again but with a proper diamond material that shows what Indigo is capable of doing. Let's quickly recap what we covered. 1. Why iClone and Indigo materials are different. 2. Finding materials on the Indigo website and downloading them. 3. Importing the material and applying it to an object in your Indigo scene. Now one last thing before I get to the teasers. I have come to the conclusion that iClone's renderer is wonderful, and so is Indigo's. They both give you different looks. It's like an artist choosing between watercolor, oil paints, or charcoal pencil. There is no best, and each serves its own artistic purpose. Consider this. In Indigo, you can get beautiful effects like prismatic bending and refractions of light. iClone simply doesn't do that. But on the other hand, in iClone you can grab the diamond and interactively spin it around and you can render a two minute video in approximately two minutes. Not two days, not two weeks. Now finally, the teasers I promised. If you're watching this video in a high quality mode, you might notice the image is less than perfect, even after rendering for a long time. Yep, I let it render a good long time and it still looks a bit grainy. It was painful, but I left that image in this tutorial because it was created using the default settings. Here, does this look better? You can see differences in the shadowy areas and in some of the refractions. Both images were rendered the same amount of time, but with one little indigo setting changed. Do you want to know how to clean up your renders? Tips like that will be in tutorial number three. But first there's a more pressing issue. As soon as my real diamond material started rendering, it looked very blue. You probably noticed that too and thought to yourself, Hey Viking, why is a diamond so blue? Shouldn't it be clear? Like this? Um, yeah, I thought so too. And that is the topic for the next tutorial. Until then, I'll be seeing you on the forums, and happy rendering!